Well, welcome everybody and thanks for your patience ahead of a very special, important day for British boxing. The return of Anthony Joshua to the O2 Arena, April 1st, live and exclusive on DAZN around the world and perhaps the most important chapter so far in this unbelievable career, 10 years this year since the professional debut against Emmanuele Leo. And I know AJ never wants the accolade or the pats on the back, but we know that British boxing, many of us in this room here today, broadcasters, media, certainly myself and our business, wouldn't be in the position it was without the job that Anthony Joshua has done for British boxing. Over the years, a tremendous ambassador, a role model, inspired so many of the next generation to increase participation at grassroots level, to inspire professional fighters to go on and see them flourish in the world of boxing today, financially in terms of legacy and big nights that have been paved through this man to my right. Two-time world heavyweight champion, Olympic gold medalist, and now back to the O2 Arena, the Lion's Den, scene of so many great moments. Of course, the epic fight against Dillian White, the World Heavyweight Championship against Charles Martin, the defense as well, but over six years since he's been at the O2 in the capital against this man to my left, Jermaine Franklin. We saw him in a tremendous fight with Dillian White, a very close one at Wembley last November. Now he believes he's got his opportunity to what he says shock the world and make his name in the elite table of the heavyweight division. For AJ this time around, a new member to the training team. Welcome to Derek James, trainer of the year. AJ training hard in Texas, ready for this big moment. And of course, welcome to Jermaine Franklin and Dimitri Salita, who believes his man has what it takes to, as we said, potentially shock the world at the O2 Arena on April the 1st. Before we speak to the fighters and their teams, I want to speak to Joe Markowski from The Zone. Of course, this is a major moment for the The Zone platform. One of the biggest stars in the sport of boxing will make his The Zone debut in the UK on April the 1st. And Joe, a big moment for, for the platform. Yeah, a huge moment for the platform. Thanks for having us. After five years of working with AJ around the world, particularly in the US, we always had one eye on bringing him home and bringing him onto The Zone here in the UK. We're delighted to be doing that. We're clearly delighted to be stepping into a long-term relationship with, with Team AJ and getting him back where we think he belongs, at the top of the heavyweight world rankings. We are exceptionally excited to be in partnership with Dimitri Salita and Jermaine Franklin, obviously, after an impressive performance uh, last year against uh, Dillian White. Uh, so we're very excited as part of a blockbuster subscription offer on the zone to bring AJ back as part of that subscription offer on April the 1st. Uh, live on the zone around the world and here in the UK. So very excited and look forward to working with all of you to deliver a fantastic event. Yeah, on that, a, a big move from the zone. Obviously, uh, AJ been pay per view for many, many years now. We're now every time he fights, it's a huge draw, huge pay per view interest in that. Decided, obviously, with part of this schedule, along with Taylor Serrano as well mm. in Dublin, to offer it to subscribers without the pay per view price point. Yeah, we are about delivering the best value we possibly can to subscribers. We saw an opportunity with the first half of this year to do that uh, with some, some major events. This included Taylor Serrano too, also all part of a very high quality and high value subscription offer on DAZN in the UK. Thank you, Joe. Dimitri Salita, welcome. You're back again. You won't go away. You've always got these uh, great fighters who come to make a name for themselves, make a statement. I know last time out, although you nearly had a punch up with Dillian White, you did feel that your man did enough to beat Dillian White in November and in the ring. Before the decision, you came over to me and said, look, we won this fight, but if we don't, then make sure we get Anthony Joshua next year. You've got it, a massive, massive opportunity for Jermaine Franklin. Thank you so much, Eddie. Thank you, AJ. We're very grateful for this opportunity. As you say, <clears throat> as you said, AJ has been one of the most dominant heavyweights of this generation, and it's a great honor for us and a great opportunity. To, to us, the fact that we got this fight shows that Jermaine is the unofficial winner of the fight versus Dillian White. In that fight, Jermaine showed that he can perform thousands of miles away from home in front of hostile fans and showed that he can win a fight where he is not the favorite. So Jermaine, this fight is about trajectory. Jermaine, in his professional career has beat many undefeated fighters before anyone has ever heard of him. He's fought on American television and it all kind of came to fruition when he fought Dillian White and April 1st is Fool's Day in the United States. I don't know if it's it in the is. UK. It is. So the, the critics are going to be fooled and Jermaine is going to be the winner. You've seen in that 
fight against Dillian White, his confidence will be at another level now, having operated at that point of the division. I know that a lot of people will always look at AJ and you know they know there's a, a pot of gold through victory against him and everyone will see flaws, but you believe the timing's right for Jermaine Franklin in this fight? Yeah, again, Anthony Joshua is a great fighter in a lot of respect for the team and where we're grateful for this opportunity. And Anthony is one of the most accomplished heavyweights ever. And he's had his ups, Olympic gold medalist, amazing fight with Charles Martin when he won the title early, Vladimir Klitschko, an all-time classic. But then, if you look at AJ closely, his, his defenses after that fight, just a little bit, just missing just a little bit. And then June 1st, 2019, a fight that's forever ingrained in my mind. Different trainers, wins, losses. I believe that it is the perfect time for Jermaine, who has lots of similarities to Andy Ruiz. He's not the biggest heavyweight, great chin, power, uh, volume puncher. When he gets hit, he's gonna come back and get you. So I believe that, that we have all the ingredients to score the upset. And obviously we know it's a big opportunity to fight Anthony Joshua, but the rewards of victory are huge. Incredible, but, uh, a true story of why boxing is so great, because in one night you can change your life. And Jermaine has been working for this for a long time. You look at Jermaine's career, when he won the National Golden Gloves, he beat Cam Awesome, who you probably know, multi-time national champion, one of the elite U.S. amateurs, he never actually turned pro. And Jermaine, at the age of 19, beat this guy. And then he turned pro, significant wins over other prospects and other contenders, and now we're at the stage. The fact that Jermaine was able to perform as well as he did against Dylan White shows that he has the mental strength and the capacity to deal with challenges outside of home, thousands of miles away. And when the bell rings and when the going gets tough, when Jermaine gets back to the corner, his trainer, Jesse, has been his voice since he's 12 years old. So if it's good, if it's bad, Jermaine is gonna trust what he's, what, he's, what he's hearing. Derek James is a great trainer, but there's only so much you can do in three months. And when the going gets tough, and I believe it will get tough uh, with Jermaine, we'll see how AJ reacts. Thank you, Dimitri. Jermaine, welcome back. You look different. I don't know whether it's you look like, you know, you, you, you knew maybe two, three weeks ago that there was a potential fight with Anthony Joshua. You look lighter. You look more confident. Is that a result of the work you've put in since the Dillian White fight or the confidence that that fight gave you? But a huge opportunity in your life on April the 1st. Well, I mean, uh, I've always been confident in myself. I never lacked in, in confidence, but uh, I've just been working, you know, uh, got home and got right back in the gym. And didn't waste no time, didn't really take no time off. Wasn't messed up from it, so uh, he had just been in the gym working, waiting. Take us back to that night in November against Dillian White. You surprised a lot of people. Not many had heard of you before that fight. In American boxing and the circuit, everyone knew what a talent you were. You've obviously watched the fight back. You still believe you should have been victorious that night. And I guess you believe there's a lot more to show in the arsenal of Jermaine Franklin. Yeah, I mean, um, I feel like I won the fight 7-5 um, from what I watched. But, um, you know, this boxing, I'm not going to cry about it. I know how stuff go. So uh, it, was just, it was just back to the drawing board for me. Uh, getting back in shape, trying to improve on um, different things, looking at different aspects, different ways to attack, different points in my game. So uh, just overall improvement. A different kind of style this time around. I saw your interview on the Design Boxing Show. Mm -hmm. But a man to my right that you would have watched for many years in some of the biggest fights in the heavyweight division. Mm -hmm. I guess you've always watched him, always looked to him, and as a fighter, always believed that you could beat him. Mm -hmm. You have that confidence, and you truly believe on April 1st you'll defeat Anthony Joshua in London. Yeah, I got, I got the utmost confidence. I, I believe I could beat anybody. You know, uh, that's, that's never a doubt in my mind. Um, if, if, if you doubt yourself, you're in the wrong sport. This ain't the sport for that. So uh, as a man, you know, he's a man just like I am. He bleeds just like I do. So like, like I, I got the confidence for me to pull this victory out. And finally, you showed a great chin, great engine, great boxing IQ, all of those things. And, and you believe that combined, you've got the style and the spirit to be victorious. And what a moment it would be for your career if you could pull this off on April the 1st. Yeah, it'd be an excellent moment for my career. Um, but, you know, I got the will. I got the will. I got the heart for it. So, you know, uh, I'm ready to go to war as always. Thank you, Jermaine. Welcome back. Look forward to seeing you on April 1st. We go to a new member of Team AJ, Derek James. Welcome. Um, 
exciting times. A new big heavyweight in the stable. Congratulations, trainer of the year last year. Anthony out in Texas with you. It's been a good start to camp, a quick visit back, but looking forward to April the 1st. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think that um, the world hasn't seen the best in Anthony Joshua, especially with the guy that I've been working with in the gym. And um, I know that Jermaine Franklin's a really good fighter, so I take it very serious, and I know Anthony's taking it very serious. And so, you know, he has a lot to prove, and I think that he will be, you know, he'll be the guy he's supposed to be out there the night of the fight. Obviously, there's questions to be answered by some people, but we believe as a team, and I'm sure you believe as well, this is one of the best, if not the best, heavyweights in the world. Is it about making a statement on April the 1st? Is it about just getting the victory by any means necessary? What do you expect from Anthony in the ring that night? I think that it's so much about Anthony being the fighter that he wants to be and he needs to be, because it's all about him. It's not about anybody else. It's not about anything else. It's about his legacy that he's trying to prove and improve on. And at the same time, it's us building and for him to be the best version of himself that night. And I think that with the time we have and then three months is not a lot, but it depends on uh, what level you're working on. So if you're working on a high level and he's a very intellectual fighter, he can do it. He can, he, he, he's maintaining and understanding everything I'm asking him to do. Obviously, you've been there up close and personal so far. What have you been most impressed with from this young man? Obviously, great hand speed, great combination right. punching right. and power, all of those things. You've seen that up close. Yes, I have. And um, I think that he's been great. I, I won't talk about what, I, what I'm most impressed with because, I mean, you know, that's a giveaway. But he's a great fighter, man. Great athleticism, great foot movement, great um, and very intellectual, first and foremost. I think that he understands his sport and understands what I'm asking him to do. But uh, his hand speed is great, and um, I'm very interested and can't wait to keep going. Well, thank you, Derek. Look forward to seeing you in the corner yep. April 1st. AJ, welcome back. Been in this room many times before. Um, a really interesting moment in your career now. For the first time, and I think this will be the 13th fight and without the, the World Championship belt on the line, 12 defenses or challenges with the world title. Pressure off, pressure on. How are you feeling ahead of this fight, April 1st? Serious, focused, locked in. It's a serious fight, good opponent. I respect all my opponents. So um, if he had the belt style, I'd take him the same way. And if he doesn't have the belt style, I've got to take him the same way. I've got to give the man his respect because he's coming to fight. And that'll make me keep my, um, keep my feet on the ground and take him seriously. Obviously, the run has been incredible and it's been yeah. over six yeah. years since we've been at the O2 yeah. arena. I won't reel off the opponents, I've done it a million times, but going back to that venue, yeah. I remember when you boxed Emanuele Leo, you know, you turned up and I remember he had that Italian tracksuit on and I thought, oh, he looks serious. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he took care of him and Baktov and Kevin Johnson and Gary Cornish and Dillian White and <clears> Charles <throat> Martin and Dominic Brazil as well. But good to be back there as well. Unbelievable atmosphere, the lion's den, everything's familiar. And looking forward to boxing in London again at the O2. You know, I don't really mind where I box, if I'm honest with you. Um, it's just a blessing to be involved in the sport, be working. It's another night at work. Um, it's been a long time on the road, fighting for championship belts, defending them, challenging people. I think it's, what, 12 fights back-to-back, -back, championship yep. fights. Been challenging. And as you said, like, you've seen the development from Emmanuel Leo up till now. And I've always, like try to adapt my style, do many different things because in this sport, especially heavyweight boxing, it's about longevity. There's obviously the side of it where it's a lion's, like the jungle, do you know what I mean? But at the same time, you have to adapt and understand that it's a sweet science where it's about hitting and not getting hit as well. So that's probably where you might have seen a different change in the way I try and approach certain fights. But with Derek here, um, he's got some tricks up his sleeve for sure and uh, we're looking forward to April. How's that been out in, in Texas? I've told people here today that it must be nice for you to go to the cinema and for a coffee and to the mall, and you said, I've done none of that. <laughs> I haven't been out, you know, I'm just training hard, but it is a new surrounding for you. It's exciting. It's something very different. <laughs> it's not, I ain't seen anything. <laughs> I'm not there for anything else. I'm just, 
I'm a serious person, isn't it? I'm not there for anything else, really. But one thing for sure, though, is like throughout my career, I think this is probably the most serious time I've taken it in terms of like my food, my sleep, the way I'm training. Like I study the game, and I'm just everything I've learned. Like me and Jermaine could chop it up and talk boxing for hours. Like everything I've learned about boxing, I'm always putting it into another camp. So everything I've been through, positive, negative. I'm, go- I'm using it to fuel this camp here. So I'm not really there to like go out for coffees and talk about bullshit. I'm there to fucking work and put my head down and get ready for a fight. Do you feel like a seasoned pro now? Sorry about my language as well, but yeah. Do you feel like a seasoned pro now? Nah, I still feel fresh and young. I still feel really fresh and young, yeah. Not, not like a seasoned pro. As I said, I adapted to certain fights, so I didn't take crazy punishment. So at this stage of my career, I'll be like, shit, I've taken so much punishment. I'm, I'm war-torn, I still feel fresh. Where does the desire come from and what is the desire? Obviously, money, I know you love money, to fight. Money. I like making money, <laughs> straight up. Like, this is a prize fighting sport. Like, I'll, I've been broke, my family's been broke. I know what this shit means and I do it like, cause I'm good at it and I hustle hard. And when it's all said and done, no one will care about me no more. So I gotta make the most of it while I'm here. And you're still in love with the sport of boxing? I mean, yeah, you've given yeah. so much back. I know what it did for you as a, as a kid. Well, there's a difference. So what happened is um, people say, like, question where, where people's heads at. Like, is his head in the game? But, like, that's one thing. I think waking up every day is just a normal everyday thing, right? You don't think about it. So going to the gym for a fighter is just a normal everyday thing. So many fighters go to the gym every day. But there's a difference when you put your heart into it. And um, I've had to kind of get rid of a lot of distractions and things in my life so I can put my heart back into the game because I always built businesses outside of boxing because of the fear that, you know, going back to square one. So I've always tried to build an empire. So when it's all said and done, I'll never be able to look back and say I made stupid decisions. But I made a conscious decision last year to step back and just put my heart into boxing and nothing else. So yeah, I've got definitely definitely got that fire going again. And that's important for a fighter to, to have that, you, you know, you've achieved so much, you've got the belts, you've had, got the legacy, you've, you've made money in the sport, your heart has to be in it, you know how dangerous yeah, the sport is. Yeah, that's what I say, it? it's not the mind, it's not just the mind, like where your head's at, it's your heart. Um, it's like being in a relationship, if your heart ain't in it, it's no good. You just wake up with your, your partner every morning, but if your heart's in it, it's a different kind of relationship. So yeah, with that being said, the relationship you have with your job, the relationship a fighter has with their sport, they need to have their heart in it if they want to get to the top. Talk about this man on my left before we, we wrap up. You were there at ringside. We were talking throughout yeah, the fight. Yeah. But you were impressed with what you saw. A smart fighter, good defence, good tank, good engine, good chin. This is a, a, a real test. Yeah, yeah, I watch him. I compare him to some old school fighters. I compare him to, uh, you know, we compare him to fights that we've watched back in the day to now. You know, people feel like boxing's based on popularity, but it's not, it's based on skill and talent. And he's got a lot of talent and a lot of skill and he's building himself up the ranks. So credit to him, good luck to him. Um, looking at the Andrew Ruiz fight, no excuse, but I think looking at that, you could see from the ring walk that something went right. But I've never come up and said, oh, this is the problem and this is why. So if people want to live off that, they can live off that. But the difference is when you watch them fights on TV, is one thing, but when you step in the ring with me, it's another thing. So um, you can watch as much as you want, but until you face me, you'll never know what it's like. And that's the same with him. I can watch as much as I like of him, but until I see him in the ring in front of me, it's going to be a different case. So good luck to him in his preparation. Um, I'll be doing my part, and I know he'll do his part, so we can put on a spectacular show for the viewers of The Zone. If you haven't signed up, make sure you sign up, because this is going to be a great fight. And last question, when you make that ring walk and going into the fight, with all the pressure that you've had over the years. Is it just another fight? There's a lot of people saying that a lot is on the line for you on April 1st, but for you, it's just, just business as normal. There is pressure in this fight. No pressure. Never, never like, it's expect, my own expectations is my pressure, but pressure's like, as I said, being broke, worrying about your bills. That's pressure. Like, look what's happening in Syria and Turkey and like, you know, the earthquake that's happened. Being in that environment's pressure. Me going to fight and going to the gym's a blessing. No pressure on my side. Well, I can't wait to see you back in the ring. April the 1st, live on the zone around the world from the O2 Arena. Tickets on sale now, going very, very quickly. They won't be available for long. 
at all. I want to thank everybody for attending today. Thank you for AJ and Derek James for flying in from the States, as did Jermaine Franklin and the Dimitri Salita, the two-time world heavyweight champion, Olympic gold medalist, back in action, potentially the most important phase of his career. Don't miss it. April the 1st, O2 Arena, live on the zone.